Today in science, we have monumental scientists that we think about in the pantheons of the greatest scientists in the world. And there are people like Isaac Newton, Albert Einstein, all these kind of brilliant people. And then a lot of people include Charles Darwin in there. Well, Charles Darwin is worthy of certain praise and worthy of certain critical awareness on the other side as well. That he's not that God that's up there. But he did make the most profound contribution because what Charles Darwin did was write up the concept of evolution in such a way that the average person could say, well, let me see, that sounds like a far better idea of how humans and the planet got into the situation it is now than the old version of Genesis. So Charles Darwin offered a scientific understanding that was available to the people, so he wrote it at that level. And yet he also, in doing that, helped uh, helped us evolve from a, a, a church-run world into a world based more on a scientific understanding of the universe. Well, well he did that. He also put a bias into the situation uh, that has really slanted the way we look at the world and how we fit into it. First of all, the theory of evolution was a theory by Lamarck, Jean-Baptiste de Lamarck from France. He wrote it 50 years before Darwin. It is the first and most valid understanding of evolution as a process that was scientifically published. So when Darwin got in there, he didn't introduce the concept of evolution. He was trying to introduce a mechanism of how evolution occurred that differed from the one that Lamarck presumably said how evolution occurred. And so we say, okay, so what was Darwin's contribution? Not the theory of evolution. It was the theory of this uh, competition and struggle for survival, that evolution is, a, is an ongoing struggle for fitness. Okay, that was how he said it was driven, and that was what came into the world. So we go back and say, well, where does it all come down to? I said, the theory of evolution was provided by Lamarck. A more natural understanding of the processes of evolution were introduced by a man called Alfred Russell Wallace. And he wrote a paper on the thing called natural selection. And he sent this manuscript to Charles Darwin, who had been working on some idea of a theory of evolution, but really have never come down to a point of commitment to actually say this is what it's all about. So Darwin's working on a theory of evolution. Wallace sends a theory of evolution. And he writes a note saying to Darwin, if you think this is worthy of a publication, would you please submit it to Charles Lyell, head of the Royal Society, for a paper for publication. Well, when Darwin received this, he broke down, he had an emotional bro breakdown because he was thinking he was going to be the provider of a theory of evolution for the world. And, uh, and he was a friend of Charles Lyell, head of the Royal Society. So he brought this manuscript over to Charles Lyell that Alfred Russell Wallace sent, a complete understanding in very few pages, an elegant scientific paper on a theory of evolution. And he brought it over and he said to Lyell, what, what should I do? Well, remember, this is Victorian England. And Victorian England has class. There's an upper class and a lower class. Darwin comes from the upper class. Alfred Russell Wallace comes from the lower class. Well, the concept of a major scientific theory on evolution being provided by a lower class person was an anathema to Victorian aristocrats. You know, it's like, you can't give credit to a, to a low class human for this great theory. So, they entered into, and that is Darwin and, and Lyle entered into what was called the delicate arrangement. And what they did is they changed the priority of the paper by saying that Darwin also has a paper on the theory of evolution, which he didn't have. So they reported at the meeting, which is a, a meeting of the Linnaean Society, they report a theory on evolution presented by Charles Darwin and Alfred Russell Wallace. Wallace was the only one with a paper. Darwin didn't even have a paper. They wrote an abstract to hastily put it in the front so that they would say that this was Darwin's work. You say, well, why is all this important at some point? Well, number one, it gives the emphasis that Darwin's point of view becomes the selected uh, uh, point of evolution for the masses because he is the primary presenter. They say, well, what do you mean point of view? It's evolution. I go, no. There's that old story, a glass is half full, a glass is half empty. It totally means two different things, so which way you look at it. 
well, what's the difference between the Darwin version of Wallace's theory and Wallace's version? The difference is, think about living in either of two worlds. World number one, it's a constant struggle to survive, and the only way you can survive is to be in this competition for fitness. And the, there's winners and there's losers, and, and so you're out there to survive every day. You're in a rat race, and you gotta go out there because if you don't do it, somebody else is gonna beat you and you're gonna die. World one. World two, and this is the world of Alfred Russell Wallace, and said, the world of evolution is based on the elimination of the weakest. And so basically it says, if you live in that world, then you strive not to be the weakest. Then you don't have to be in competition with so many others because the, it's only, you just don't want to be in the last couple. So that means you just have to work yourself up a bunch of couple of people rather than to be the top one in the entire pile. So I said, well, which planet would you like to live on? The one where you have to struggle every day to be on the top of the pile, or the one where every day is all you have to make sure is, is you're not at the bottom of the pile. And you see, well, that's two different worlds. And we live in the Darwinian version world. And that Darwinian version world is the world of competition, struggle, violence, war, all as part of a biological necessity for evolution. And that there's an upper class, and they're the real leaders of evolution and everybody else is the feeder layer and that class consciousness and all that stuff and I said well what does that lead to and the answer is you take Darwinian theory you make scientific principle of, out of this theory then you put it into political action and you have Nazi Germany and that is what you get from a Darwinian theory.